Good morning, Year 8. So today's do now is a little bit different to what we would normally do, OK? So I'm going to read it out to you, and then you've got to decide. Um, well, the next slide will explain. So Year 8 students, due to pioneering research proving that blue-eyed people are academically and biologically inferior to those with brown eyes, the school has made a number of small changes to the structure of your lessons. So rule one, all brown eyes must be served before blue eyes at break and lunch times. Rule two, blue eyes must never be seated before brown eyes. Rule three, blue eyes must not speak or socialise with brown eyes. Four, blue eyes must wear an identification sticker at all times. And rule five, blue eyes will not be entered for academic study and must attend longer school days, 8 till 5pm, to ensure that they fully understand all work set. So people with brown eyes or close to brown eyes will continue to benefit from all of the rules and all of the luxuries that being a superior member of society entails. People with blue eyes or close to blue eyes will live separate lives. So how did you feel when you read that notice? What issues can you spot and what questions would you want to ask? Give yourself five minutes to reread what the new rules are and have a think about these questions. Okay, so after thinking about your initial response, we're now going to have a think about this in more depth. So if you're a brown eyed person, obviously you are superior at this point. So are any of your friends in the other group and how does that make you feel? Uh, are you supportive or outraged about the new system on the blue eyes behalf? Do you feel power, superiority or any alliances? And then if you were somebody on the blue eyes side, obviously if you've got green eyes, then you would be classed as blue eyes. Are any of your friends in the other group, how does that make you feel? How do you feel um, you are being treated as an individual? What are the options for you as a group? Are you upset? Are you angry? Are you questioning? Are you challenging? So does our eye colour have anything to do with how intelligent or creative we are? And if all blue eyed people are the same, what is the connection between eye colour and racism then? OK, so today's topic is something that's really important and it teaches us quite a lot about diversity. So my first question is, what do you think the word apartheid means? OK, so just think about it for a couple of minutes. If you don't have any clue at all, that's absolutely fine. And um, if you do know, then obviously write it down for me. So I'm hoping that if you've written anything down or if you've had a think about it, you'll know that an apartheid is basically rules and regulations that are set out to segregate people. So segregation means that you are separated into um, specific groups based on certain characteristics. So the apartheid that we are looking at is where um, segregation happened in terms of race. So there was uh, segregation between black and white people. So with that in mind, what I'd like you to do now is just have a think about how do you imagine an apartheid to be? What do you think it would be like to live during that time? Can you give some points and explain these with examples? OK, so spend five minutes doing this. So if you lived during a time where there was clear segregation, so black and white people had to live very separate lives. How do you think that would be and what, how do you imagine it would look? OK. So our poem today is focused around a place called District 6, OK? And District 6 was an area of Cape Town in South Africa that was well known for its mixed race population. And it was a poor district, but full of character, home to Muslim, Jews, black and white people. So basically what was happening during this time period was that there was a lot of segregation going on. The apartheid was obviously happening in lots of different parts of the country where white and black people were segregated in regards to everything. So you imagine um, going to McDonald's white people would have been the only people allowed to go to McDonald's. Black people wouldn't have been allowed to go there. You imagine needing to go to a public toilet. There would have been separate toilets for black and white people. White people's would have been much cleaner, much better. They would have been looked after much more carefully. Black people were seen as being an inferior race. Um, and essentially that obviously fed in from slavery and things that happened in the past. Now, District 6 was a place that obviously contrasted to all of that because they were known for having a mixed race population and they did have lots of different religious beliefs within that and um, so they actually went against segregation essentially because they had this mixture of, of all different types of people so there are two videos now that you are going to watch for me okay i've attached these to show my homework so don't worry about trying to copy the links from the video what I want you to think about is how does each of these videos link to the brown eyes and blue eyes activity that I gave you as you started today? And how would you feel if you lived in District 6? OK, so you're going to need to make some notes in your book for me. 
um, and have a think about those ideas. So obviously, as you saw from those two videos, District 6 was actually, um, you know, essentially bulldozed over uh, once the apartheid came into play. So once that segregation happened, um, they felt like District 6 was too much of a communal area. There was too much happening. Uh, and they started to bring in these rules that meant that there couldn't be such a place. Uh, and obviously, this newspaper article here shows you about the times when um, the bulldozers did come in and start to rip apart uh, District 6. So they basically ended uh, any sort of communication between different races or different beliefs. And here is just one of the signs that people would have seen uh, on a daily basis. So for use by white persons, these public premises and amenities thereof have been reserved for the exclusive use of white persons. You just imagine now walking down the street and seeing that we'd be absolutely disgusted, wouldn't we? You know, racism for us is a, is a no go territory. We, we absolutely stand against it. And I mean, if you pay attention to the news, you'll have you'll have seen about, you know, all of the the black protesting at the moment that's going on around uh, equality and how we're still not essentially equal in terms of race. However, once you look back at things like this, you think about how far we have come. And actually, you know, we are quite further forward than uh, what we might have potentially thought in the past. So just imagine seeing this on the streets. So although we've not got onto our actual text today, you should have learned quite a lot about District 6 and the apartheid. So what I'd like you to do is create me a really full mind map of all the things that you've learned about District 6 and the apartheid today, because obviously that is going to feed quite heavily into what we do next lesson. Make sure you answer the show my homework quiz and I'll see you next lesson.